All right, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build out an application where you can have a natural language conversation with a large body of text, such as a book, uh, the technology that we're going to use. So we're going to use uh, Node.js, Langchain, we're going to use the OpenAI API. And without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this book, uh, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. And part of the reason why I wanted to use this book is because it's recently released. So just in the past several months here. And just to demonstrate this, so if I go over to ChatGPT and reference their newest model or any model for that sake, and if I ask a question about this book, you'll see that ChatGPT doesn't have any information on this because it was trained on da data prior to 2021. So what I did, the first thing that I did is I had an EPUB version of the book and I simply converted that EPUB to text. So I just use one of these online conversion tools. I'm sure there'd be a way you could do it within a node um, itself, but I found this just easy enough, just drag, drop, download. And then once I had that, I put the text file of uh, the text version of the book within my uh, directory here. And then the next thing that I'm going to have you do is go over to the OpenAI website. We're going to grab an API key. So if you don't have an account, super simple. You don't need a credit card to initially sign up. Uh, you also get some credits off the bat without needing to tie in a credit card or anything. So if you're just trying this out, uh, you can go that route and uh, get some free credits to try this out. And then once we have that, we're going to copy our API key from here. We're going to go into our .env. I'm not going to pull it up here, but uh, just put it in openai underscore API underscore key equals and then paste in your key. And then once we have that, we're going to initialize a couple things. So I'll just uh, copy this for a second. So you're going to want to run npm init dash y just like that and run that. So I've already done that. I'm not going to actually run that. Now, once you've initialized it, you're going to uh, install a few packages here. Oop, scroll down here. So we're going to install npmi. This is the vector library. Uh, we're going to install a langchain and .env. So this is a, a dependency for langchain when we're using this. So once you have those installed, um, we'll head over to our index.js. So just uh, initialize an index.js if you don't already have one. And then we're going to be running through these instructions here. So one thing to note, uh, I'll also delete this, but this is what we're going to be uh, doing in this uh, tutorial. So we're going to be saving a vector version locally. We're not going to be using Pinecone or any database in this. I just want to keep it uh, simple and straight to the point. But I also want to add that added uh, feature where you're not continually querying and embedding potentially large documents. So we'll just... Um, sort of quality of life thing, cache a local version of it um, with what we're about to do here. So if I open this up, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the necessary libraries. So we're going to be referencing Langchain for most of this, um, but then we're also going to be uh, using .env and fs for um, well, we're going to be using FS for saving things locally, reading things locally, and then .env to reference that environment variable. So we're going to load in our environment variable. And then right here, we're going to set up a few variables just to make this a little bit more reusable. So the first variable, we're going to have the name of the file. If I open it up over here, we have the name of our book in this case here. Uh, we're going to have the question of the book. So the question I derived just from looking at the first um, few pages here in sort of the chapters list, uh, there's um, a chapter called uh, The Opposite is True? question um, mark. And uh, I'm going to be sort of making a question, you know, without actually going to the book, seeing what it says based on that. So based on the, uh, the, the text file name, we're going to be using that to reference the actual text file itself, but we're also going to be using this as the variable to create the vector store index. And so what that will look like once it runs will be this. You have a few JSON files and then this uh, .index file here. So I'll just delete this. 
because we're going to run through this just in a second. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up an asynchronous function and I just called it run with embeddings. Uh, we could probably name it something a bit more appropriate, but as they say, you know, naming's one of the harder things in programming. Uh, so once we have that, we're just going to set um, a new instance and initialize the OpenAI model. I'm not going to be passing in any arguments here. So different people have different access, like three or four, depending on uh, what you have requested or what's just available to you uh, from the API. Then from there, we're going to set a variable for our vector store. And before doing anything, we're going to check if the vector store path exists. So that folder that I just deleted, we're going to check if it exists, um, if it already exists, so it doesn't have to run the embeddings uh, each time. So to save you on hitting that endpoint and being charged um, repeatedly, especially for big documents. So if it exists, we're just going to say, okay, it exists. And then we're going to load that into our vector store variable here. So from there, we're going to uh, go into our separate condition. So this will run the first time. If it doesn't exist, we're going to read our text file. Once we've read it, we're going to establish this function where we break up our document into chunks of a thousand. And the reason why we want to do that is because the embeddings endpoint on OpenAI only can handle a certain number of characters or tokens with each request. So once we have that, we're actually going to split our text into uh, little, little chunks. And then from there, we're actually going to create the new vector store and reach out to the OpenAI embeddings endpoint. Then once that's uh, awaited and returned, we're going to save that to our path like we had seen above. And then from there, we're going to use this retrieval QA chain. And then we're going to be passing the model that we referenced here. So in this case, we're using OpenAI. And then we're going to also be passing our vector store. Um, so from there, we're going to pass in our question that we established up here and actually call the chain and wait for the response. So we'll simply, in this example, just log out the response, but we could also you know, send this response back through an API or, or however you want to set this up. Then from there, we're just going to uh, invoke the function. So I'll just um, I'll open up. My terminal is a little broken there. I'll open up a new terminal, just clear this, and I'm just going to run the file. So the first time that you run it, depending on the size, it will take a little bit more time than if it's referencing the locally cached version. But as you can see, even though this was a 200 page book, it embedded it, stored it as a vector, and also gave us a response in less than a couple seconds, really. Um, so you can see here the wisdom of the opposite of true, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If I go back to the book, I could say, um, you know, let's just take that. And if I say, tell me about, oh, and it also copies all that. We'll just get rid of that. Save that. And then now when I run it, it's going to use that local vector store instead of actually embedding it again. So once you have it cached, um, you're not going to be incurring that initial larger cost of embedding that whole document. So hopefully you found this useful. If you did, um, please like, comment, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comments below. And until the next one.